Today we're talking about the Sony A1 Mark II. When's it gonna drop? What are the specs gonna look like? And let's kind of have a speculation chat about everything that we know so far, where technology is going, and of course the competition with Nikon and Canon. So the timing I think has to be absolutely perfect for the A1 Mark II, which is tricky because we've got the rumored Canon R1 and even their R5 Mark II coming up. Um, rumored to be kind of mid 2024. So definitely we're not gonna see a release before that, I think. And when the A1 was released, it kind of blew everybody away. It was easily the best camera we've ever seen and it was just a game changer in just so many aspects. It's a very, very expensive body and I think me and a lot of people expect no compromise. Of course, there's a kind of a touchy subject around the firmware updates, which should be dropping anytime and hopefully we get a few more features that those guys were looking for. Although it wasn't promised when you bought the camera, yes, for a flagship, camera I can see where you're coming from that you'd expect some updates in the future. Now getting back to the A1 Mark II, this thing has to be another leap forward in technology. Small increment improvements are just not going to be a win in this regard. As we've got AI and technology just on an exponential scale, things are getting crazy. Although like I said, the timing has to be absolutely perfect and rumor has it that we might see some kind of release around the Summer Olympics, but honestly I don't really see this thing coming out till the end of 2024 or even early 2025. Let me know your thoughts down about that in the comments. Now having said that, let's get into some of the specs we can probably expect or at least wanna have in the A1 Mark II. Now, number one is gonna be the sensor, the heart of everything. And this is where it's gonna get kind of tricky because we've got technology kind of splitting off in different avenues and you can't have the best of everything, unfortunately. We've got the global shutter now in the A9 Mark III, which is a total game changer, but it does come at the cost of a base ISO of 250, so image quality. And it's also coupled with the 24 megapixel sensor, which a lot of people are saying just isn't enough. For me, I think that 50 megapixels is just a perfect sweet spot for the majority of shooting. I think it's fantastic. But we run into the problem of frames per second shooting and readout with a 50 megapixel camera. Is it possible, probably not, to match that 120 frames per second shooting like we see in the A9. No, I don't think we're there. I think that's insane amounts of speed, not to mention the cost of memory cards and storage. It's just unfathomable to think about. So who really needs 120 frames per second? We went from 30 to 120 frames per second. That is insane. So who actually needs that? I think the majority of even professional sports shooters could honestly say that 50 or 60 frames per second is going to be completely adequate and just amazing. So I don't really see any more than that without the camera getting so incredibly expensive that it just doesn't make sense anymore. It has to be realistic. Is it gonna have a global shutter? Well, that's up for debate. I don't really think so because a global shutter, again, comes at the cost of image quality and apparently megapixels. We need a, an insanely fast readout speed to come anywhere close to that. And I don't think technology is actually there. Yes, it's amazing for things like flash photography and incredible in theory, but in practice, for somebody looking at this camera, are you gonna utilize that to its maximum potential? I'd be interested. Now, are we at the point in technology where a rolling shutter slash kind of global shutter where we could take advantages of both aspects, are we there? And what does that even look like? I don't know, but maybe that's the route that it goes. Do we see Sony stick to stack sensors, but also improve the rolling shutter? Or do we see that kind of hybrid? I really don't know where that's gonna go. And of course, cost is gonna be a factor. Which avenue would you personally rather see this go in? Because honestly, I think that's gonna be the biggest factor in the success of this upcoming camera. Of course, ideally, we wanna see improved dynamic range and image quality. But again, everybody has different priorities. If shooting speed's the priority, maybe you don't even need this camera. Now in no way should the A1 really compromise. It should have the best of the best. And that includes, again, that pre-capture, which is just incredible. But it should have every feature that every other camera really has, minus kind of proprietary meaningless features that some certain cameras might have, like film cameras, or again, maybe like that really niche 120 frames per second shooting, which a lot of people just don't need in any way. So the A1, I think, is supposed to be the ultimate hybrid camera. And it is. So video shooters are gonna expect really, really high quality video. But again, you're not gonna cannibalize your full cinema line of cameras that are coming out more and more often that are just incredible. So I think overall Sony does a pretty good job of kind of keeping those lines in place. So for video, I think we can expect the same amazing quality, the 8K and even up to maybe 240 frames per second and definitely no crop up to 120. But again, it has to be better. It has to have better IBIS. It has to have 
better hybrid image stabilization. It, it has to have better everything. Where do you really focus on this camera to make it the best? And it's hard because we don't really know the full direction that cameras are really going into, but I think AI might play a, a big part. That said, we're already seeing very, very good AI-assisted autofocus that's gonna help you pick your subjects. It's really getting good with those algorithms and very, very impressive. But when do we start to see the addition of computational photography even as an option? I think, again, with AI, I think it's inevitable, but at the same time, there's even steps being taken to safeguard our images from AI, to actually have stuff in the metadata that proves that our images are not compromised by AI. Now, depending whether you're a commercial photographer or a videographer, or you're just a passionate photographer that loves competition, you're gonna have different and varying opinions on this matter. But I think overall, in terms of the autofocus, it's already just absolutely mind-blowing, and I think we can expect to see it just get that much better. I think a huge factor is that there must be absolutely no overheating issues whatsoever in the A1 Mark II. That is something that, again, is not gonna be really negotiable for a lot of people, and I think given the cost of this camera, that should be a no-brainer. So the body itself, the ergonomics, I think Sony's really, really done a fantastic job as of late in giving just pretty much what is the perfect feeling camera, all the buttons and switches and customizations that you could ever want. The weather ceiling's fantastic. The flip and tilt screen, they've absolutely nailed. Battery life is really, really good. Call me simple, but for me, I just kind of want the basics done extraordinarily well and I'm happy. I don't need a bunch of gimmicky stuff and I know that probably we're gonna see that stuff in the future, but for now, we can only speculate in where technology and I guess really the hardware is gonna be our only limitation. So let me know down in the comments, guys, what you think about this camera, if you plan on picking it up and what it actually has to be for you to pull the trigger on it. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button, join the community, and like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.